Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Alex Nicolaitis, the webcast coordinator for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the question and answer window on your screen. After the presentation, we'll begin the Q&A portion and I'll ask our speaker your questions. Your questions in the Q&A window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Sushmita Kohli, PhD, Senior Scientist, Process Chromatography from BioRad Laboratories. Thank you for the kind introduction. I welcome all the viewers for attending this webinar. Today, I will be speaking about development of ion exchange purification process for lentiviral vectors. I would like to give a brief overview on lentiviral vectors, also abbreviated as LVV. Lentiviral vectors have been increasingly employed as gene delivery vehicles for the treatment of a variety of genetic and acquired human diseases. However, lentiviral purification processes have often suffered from low yields, mainly due to poor stability of the vectors and low product titer in the feed material. Hence, the objective of this work is to develop a robust, fast, and scalable process for the purification of lentiviral vectors. We started by learning about the isoelectric point of the lentivirus, which was reported to be between 6 and 6.5. This meant that at a neutral pH environment, lentivirus will acquire a net negative charge and hence can be adsorbed on a positively charged adsorbent, such as the anion exchange resins. For the downstream process development, we considered both lentiviral stability studies as well as several types of anion exchange media. These included resins, monoliths, and membranes. From our preliminary screening studies, we found chromatographic adsorbents to show promising data, and therefore we carried the next set of experiments with only chromatographic adsorbents. For designing the lentiviral purification process, we employed the high throughput process development, also called as the HDPD approach. In the first phase, we used the study plate technique wherein we screened a list of anion exchange adsorbents on 96 well plate. This study was carried out in two levels. The first level involved a broad resonance screen wherein the primary goal of the study was to find out which resins provided good lentiviral recovery. Several reported literature mention lentiviral purification performed by both weak anion as well as strong anion exchange resins. In this high throughput screening study, we wanted to broaden the list by incorporating other chromatographic adsorbents that have not been screened or reported before for lentiviral purification. The table presented here enlists all the resins that were employed for the level 1 screening. These included the weak anion, strong anion, and multimodal anion exchanger resins. Again, the primary goal of level 1 screening was to achieve high lentiviral recovery. This slide shows the protocol for the slurry plate screening. We added 100 microliter of each resin in the 96 well plate and equilibrated with 500 microliters of the equilibration buffer, which resulted in a phase volume ratio of 5 is to 1. Following equilibration, the lentiviral harvest superagent was incubated for one hour under shaking condition for the loading step. The unbound impurities were washed away using the equilibration buffer in the wash step. Then, for the elution step, three different salt concentrations were used for eluting the lentivirus, that is 0.5, 1, and 1.5 molar sodium chloride. Finally, the resins were regenerated using 2 molar sodium chloride in press buffer, and the eluted fractions were analyzed by RTQPCR technique 
for estimating the lentiviral physical title. The current slide shows the plot of the percent lentiviral recovery from the elution step. As can be seen from the figure, few chromatographic resins could cut across the target blue dotted line and successfully provide greater than 50% lentiviral recovery in the elution step. Here, I would like to emphasize to the viewers that macro prep high Q was also observed to be one of the resins that provided greater than 50% elution recovery and hence was selected for the next level of high throughput screening. The top performing resins from the level 1 screening were further screened for the process conditions which was done by altering the pH and salt concentration. The goal of the level 2 screening study was to evaluate the resolution and selectivity of these resins. That is, whether they are able to separate the lentivirus from the process impurities such as the host cell proteins. Importantly, the lentiviral stability data was also taken into consideration for this set of screening. It was found that phosphate buffer was found to provide the most stabilizing environment when compared to other buffering salts such as bistrous propane, MOX, MES, etc. Hence, Further experimentation was carried with phosphate buffer. The process condition screening was carried out in a 96 well plate with the enlisted chromatographic absorbance, which showed promising lentiviral vector recovery from the broad screen. The elution conditions were evaluated by varying the pH and salt concentrations. While the pH was evaluated at three different conditions, that is at pH 6.5, pH 7, and pH 7.5, the salt concentration was evaluated at four different conditions, that is at 0.3 molar, 0.7 molar, 1 molar, and 1.5 molar sodium chloride concentration. The resulting elution fractions were then analyzed by RTQPCR technique to determine the percent lentiviral recovery in terms of their physical titer and the residual protein impurities were analyzed by Bradford assay. For the benefit of time, I would be focusing the results from the macro prep high resin for the rest of the presentation. Before moving forward, I would like to spend some time going over a few key points about macro prep high resin. This is an economical product line from BioRad known for rapid purification of large biomolecules. It has shown several benefits including high capacity, selectivity in removing trace contaminants, high resolution, as well as excellent dynamic binding capacity. Moreover, it can withstand pH changes up to 10 and can retain full functional performance in presence of acid and detergent treatment. This is due to its characteristic properties such as rigid methacrylate matrix which provides superior mechanical, thermal and chemical stability. Macroprep high resin is a slightly hydrophobic base bead which has high living density and is available with an average particle size of 50 microns. Coming back to the process condition screening result for the macro prep high resin. Presented here in the plot is the person plenty virus recovered with respect to changes in pH and salt concentration. The data shows an interesting trend wherein it can be observed that the lentiviral recovery increased with a decrease in elution pH. This behavior has important implications for process design, wherein a large fraction of the protein impurities could potentially be washed from the column at a lower salt concentration at pH 7.5, while the lentivirus could then be eluted at a relatively higher salt concentration at a lower pH of 6.5. Eluting at a lower pH also implies that a lower salt elution could be employed, which in turn can enhance the lentiviral stability since high salt conditions are detrimental to lentiviral stability. Thus, Macroprep HiQ data provided promising results for designing a bind elute lentiviral purification step.
To confirm what we observed from the batch screening method, we wanted to evaluate further the resolution and selectivity of macroprep high resin in a dynamic setting. This was done using a mini column format with the established process condition, which provided high lentiviral recovery and good impurity clearance. For the column studies, a mini column of 0.5 ml volume was used. A linear gradient from 0 to 1.5 molar sodium chloride was applied for eluting the lentivirus. Four CV elution fractions were collected during the gradient and were analyzed by RTQPCR and Bradford assay. The resulting plot shows that the protein impurities required a lower salt concentration for elution, whereas the lentivirus required a relatively higher salt concentration. This data confirmed that macroprep high cube can be utilized for lentivirus purification in dynamic conditions as well. Gathering knowledge and information from the batch screening and mini column experiments, we finally devised a step gradient elution process for lentivirus purification. The process outputs are presented in the plot shown above, where it can be observed that the lentivirus could be successfully separated from the protein impurities by a salt step gradient. This process could achieve both high lentiviral physical title recovery, that is 78%, from RTQPCR with an 85% protein impurity clearance. In addition, other analytics such as P24 ELISA, transduction assay, and HCP ELISA were performed. While the P24 ELISA helped to measure the amount of lentiviral capsid protein, the transduction assay helped to measure the infectivity of the lentiviral particles. It can be seen from the table that the recovery data based on RTQPCR, P24 ELISA, and transduction assays were in good agreement, thereby confirming that not only high recoveries were achieved with these step gradient processes, but that the lentiviral particles maintained their infectivity during the process. This was likely impacted by the five-fold dilution of lentiviral eluate fractions to reduce the salt concentration in the final product pool, as well as the relatively short exposure time of the lentivirus to the elevated elution salt conditions in the column. Additionally, the HCP ELISA assay showed a greater than 2.5 log reduction in the HCPs. With this, I would like to summarize and conclude my talk. Lentiviral vectors were successfully purified by a bind elute capture step from the cell culture supernatant by using an ion exchange adsorbents. Process development stage included high throughput screening of resins and its process conditions using 96 well study plate format to minimize time and material requirements. The many column results correlated well with the batch results showing robustness of the HDPV strategy in obtaining desired resolution and selectivity. Macroprep high resin was observed to be a promising chromatographic adsorbent for lentivirus purification. For more information, please check this reference for any other details you would like to see. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge Professor Stephen Kramer from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute of New York, my postdoctoral advisor for his valuable inputs. Also, Dr. Ronit Ghosh, who was a former graduate student at his lab, since the work was done in collaboration with him. Furthermore, I would like to acknowledge Nimble for providing us the grant to carry out this interesting piece of work, as well as Mass Biologics for providing us the upstream harvest. Finally, I would like to thank everyone for their time and attention today and would encourage the viewers to check out the online resources provided here to request samples and contact our experts by emailing at process at biorat.com. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions. 
Okay, great. And as a reminder to our audience, you can go ahead and type in your questions for our speaker now. So our first question is, is there a second step to the purification or is this a single step purification? Um, thanks for the question. That's a great question. Um, so in the current study, this was a single step purification primarily to capture the lentivirus. Uh, but uh, there are ongoing studies uh, which are done to refine the purity further by adding a second polishing step. All right, and it looks like our next question is, what is the main challenge when working with LVV? Yeah, thanks for the question. This is also a very important question. So the main challenge is always with the LVV stability during the various bioprocessing steps. Uh, lentivirus is known to be sensitive to high salt concentrations or changes to extreme pH. They have also been reported to have limited thermostability. That means they are sensitive to freeze thaw cycles and are also susceptible to shear stress. So one needs to design a purification process keeping all these parameters in mind. And next we have, for the high throughput screening work, how long did it take to design and carry out the entire experiment? Yeah, so this uh, uh, study, um, after arriving at a robust analytical protocol, uh, the whole study regarding the high throughput screening was designed and executed within a one to two week time frame. And is benzenase treatment needed? Um, again, a great question. Um, benzenase treatment is definitely a good step to incorporate in LVV bioprocessing. It helps to chop down the whole cell DNA, thereby lowering the burden on the column chromatography step. In this study, benzenase treatment was done prior to the column chromatography. Uh, however, there are reports that mention uh, carrying the step after the column purification. So either pre-column or post-column, it has shown to work well. So this treatment is definitely good to have. Okay, well, it looks like we're running a bit short on time. So if we don't get to your question, we'll be passing them along to Sushmita, who can follow up with you directly. So please go ahead and continue to type in any questions you have, and we'll get those passed along. The last question for the webcast is, what are the challenging contaminants to remove during LVV purification? Um, again, this is a great question. Uh, the challenging contaminants in LVV purification can be of two types. One can be product-related and the other can be process-related impurities. Uh, the product-related impurities include contaminants like viral aggregates, non functional vector or free vector envelopes, while the process impurities include host cell proteins, host cell DNA, plasmid DNA, nucleases, etc. All right, well, thank you, Sushmita. Yes, thanks a lot. Um, and I thank all the viewers for their time and for attention. Yeah, and thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website, and as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye. <laughs>